Good afternoon. I'm Joe Flick. I'm your CE coordinator. I'm here with my friends, Pam and Suzanne, who are going to be our primary presenters today. We also have Chuck online. This will be Chuck's last Aspen, um, Aspen Basics course because he has unfortunately found some golden parachute or some really great opportunity and he's leaving us the end of next week. So um, we're all very sad about that. But just if you're tuning in, you'll know that there, we're going to try to find a, a valid replacement for Chuck. <laughs> that won't be easy. Anyway, turning it over to you, Suzanne. Hello and welcome to our latest Aspen Basics. And today we're going to talk about updating positions. So, um, you know, we talked already about persons. And so in Aspen, we differentiate between persons and positions because like persons can hold more than one position and they can change positions. And so, you know, you want to be able to change either or both of those. So after you log in to Aspen, which, you know, won't bother doing that because I'm sure you're all really good at doing that already. And you come to your um, Aspen admin page which is the first one that you come up with. When you scroll down under the MSL admin menu, you will see um, section on persons. And under that, you can manage persons and you can manage positions. And so today we are going to manage positions. I have to be careful because I always want to manage those persons. I guess I just have that, you know, that manage thing in there and I go to the wrong one. So make sure you hit the right one, which I did. And we'll see how long it takes. I was having all kinds of fun getting these. Come on, you can do it. And we wait, 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 wait. This, this is called the Aspen pause, and it just gives you a chance to take three deep breaths and enjoy your day. <laughs> Breathe. Okay. And we go down, and as we were discussing earlier, you know, we don't want to mess around with a real person's um, position. <laughs> so we'll go down and find one of our fakes that we put in here. Um, so I think today I will um, play around with the position of um, know it all which is um, Felonius Gru is currently holding that. Now we are going to replace Felonius Gru um, because he's found another position. Um, so we're going to have a new know-it-all. So over here, we have all of these little um, things that so we can choose one of these. We can choose view, we can choose edit, we can choose, come on, come on up with what we can do with that. Remove or replace. So we want to replace felonious. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that one. I believe I was told that library directors only see the people in their library, even though that's kind of what I thought you were going to see, Suzanne. I thought that's what I was gonna see everybody. too, but I still get yeah. everything, so. Yeah. yeah, but library directors would only see the people in their library. You wouldn't have the 3,000 um, people to go through. Which which makes it much easier for you. You don't yeah. have to scroll through all of these people and risk, you know, changing the wrong positions That's or wrong. You know, removing people from their places. Yeah. The awesome responsibility we have. Okay, so here's Felonius coming up here. And um, you can see since we're going to remove or replace him, you have to put an end date in there. And Percy's, you know, you know, offering his suggestions because he always does. And let's say um, Felonius left yesterday. So we'll go ahead and put that in as end date. And then you have an option between replace this position with another person or remove the position from Aspen. Um, I would be really cautious about removing the position entirely. I mean, there may be a point where um, you know, you really are removing this from your library, like you're not, you know, you're not going to hire another, um, another know it all, you know, because, you know, you, you're never going to have funding for this at all. But um, quite often, it's just temporary. And so I'll show you what we can, you know, 
what we can do with that a little bit later. Um, so we'll go ahead and replace. Suzanne, I have a question. Mm -hmm. if you have somebody that, this is Jeannie, if you have somebody that retires and you replace a new name in their position, then does that make them disappear? There was a little concern about somebody's name still being on there with one of my employees that retired. And I said, no, there's no personal information on there. Like we don't put home phone numbers and things like that in there. No, they stay in there because, um, you know, they may come back as a trustee, something like that. So, you know, so we won't remove the person from okay. the, um, you know, from the, the record. So. And the, this is Joe. I want to jump in too. I mean, one of the reasons that the person record is separate is that their continuing education record stays with them forever. And so we don't, they're not removed from Aspen because they took, they took courses that we recorded and they're part of our data that, that forever, whether they got um, CE or not, if they registered for events, we, we retain that information. You keep track of them. Well, and the other thing I- Well, yeah, it sounds not... bad, but it really, um, you know, <laughs> we are, the idea is that um, it is a matter of public record too. So not, not that they went, but that people went to, to sessions that we hosted, so. Right, yeah, but so. there's no personal phone numbers and addresses, and I was pretty sure there wasn't because I'd never seen any. But no, nothing like that. They actually have control over what they can, what their person say, um, stuff. Unless they chose to put that into their person or position record, which we do not suggest you do. Um, right. It should not be. It should just be the library information. Right. Right. But if they decided they wanted to keep up their CE and their certificate past their retirement for some reason, they could. Okay. Great. Thank you. Good question. Uh, um, okay, so now we're we've hired somebody as a new know-it-all for our library. So we're going to put them in the position. And so if this were somebody new to the library entirely, you would go ahead and create a new person, which I still love that we were talking about that before. It's like, ooh, Frankenstein, I'm going to create a new person. But um, we did that in a previous segment, so I'm not going to go through that today. Um, so we're going to assume this is someone who is um, already in the system. Maybe they held another job at the library or they were at another library. And so they're already in there because we haven't removed them. And so we can just pull them from the drop down uh, menu here. And let's see. Oh, I know. We're going to give this job to Melville Dewey because we know that he is a good know-it-all. And we were just darn lucky to get him in for this position. And I love scrolling. <laughs> We've got a lot of people in here at this point, so it takes a little while to come up with it. So there's Melville. If you started typing Dewey, it would yeah. drop it down a little faster, but scrolling is fine. If you, I if love you, scrolling. If you scrolling, indeed scrolling, love scrolling, good scrolling, for you. go for it. Scrolling makes me happy. Yeah. And so then we can go down and um, just make sure that the rest of the information here is still current. Now you see um, the, the part in the grayed out box is the personal information. So we can't change any of that here from this screen. Um, the things that we can change are the position information. So we wanna make sure that we have the organization right, the position type, um, the, you know, whether it's displayed publicly, um, that kind of thing. And so here is where we have the phone number and the beginning date. And so if the beginning date is something other than today, I noticed it just defaulted to today's. Um, like if he's going to start tomorrow or next week, you would go ahead and put that in. This is particularly important for trustees because um, this helps all of us kind of keep track of when their terms begin and end. So, you know, that's handy information to have, have accurately in there. The phone number should not be a personal number. It should be the library's uh, phone number. Um, same thing if you're going to put an email in there. And then we have addresses, mailing addresses, if that's different. Um, notice we also have um, wage information in here. And this is not public. 
it goes in the system, but it is really handy. And once again, this is attached to the position, not the person, but um, we get asked all the time, you know, especially when people are posting for new jobs, you know, if we have any information on salaries at for similar positions at um, different libraries, so they can kind of figure out, you know, what's a good salary for their for their position. So if you put that in and you keep it accurate, it helps so we can pull that out. Um, and so it's hourly wage and hours worked. So once you have all that in, you can go ahead and save it. And you have updated the record and you get your little pink bar up there telling you that congratulations, your record has been inserted. So any questions about um, removing or updating or replacing a position? And as you can see, Percy is really trying to help in the background because that's what he does. Thanks, Percy. Okay, if no questions, we can move on to the next one. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create and edit positions. So you can see when we're in here, we can go directly to create new position. And um, once again, if we were going to have a new person come into the new position, um, we would do that here. If not, um, but we have the person already and we just want to put them into position. I think I'm going to go all the way down here. I just heard about person Zoho. So we're going to give person Zoho a new position in here. And then going to the library, which is Aspen Test Library. And not the director, um, let's say they're the board chair. Yeah, might be messing this one up, but um, the position, um, I find this rather redundant, the position type and position title in this case you know, the board chair and, you know, library trustee, um, but, you know, it's fairly evident as to what the person, and I now have another assistant helping. <laughs> Luna is coming up to help me with this too. Everybody likes to help. Um, like sometimes, I said, I'll just say sometimes at some libraries, you know, maybe the board chair is actually like a liaison to something else and they just give them a different title. I think that's part of why you could do something different, but I agree with you. I find it to be a little redundant. Mm -hmm. also. Position type can give you special permissions to the system while mm -hmm. the position title, uh, you may assign somebody as a director type, even though they're not actually a director because a director gets special permissions if that's how you chose to set up your library, so. Thank you, Chuck. For the which, which, actually, answer. which actually displays on the public record position title the title so the yep. yeah so you might want to put in there the library trustee would be because he's that this person is the board chair now but maybe maybe they'll be the library trustee for five years yeah or it, six it years. stays you know that one stays a little longer you know, but I think if you put in board member, something like that, that's probably fine too, you know. So I don't know that the position title there is, you know, I mean. That's what the public sees when they look up this, exactly. the, your and, library. And those of us who are librarians have this kind of idea that we'd like everything to be really consistent. So like if you've called all of your board members, board members up to this point, you may want to be consistent with that. But um, if you don't and you want to be wild and crazy and have slightly different titles for all of them, 
you know, so be it. But just know that that that's very handy to know that that's the one that actually displays. I want to add into that the position type does allow us, you know, so say we're trying to reach um, all the board chairs in from the public libraries in Montana, our database can now search and find all of those people, no matter what they're called at your library, whether they're called a trustee or a board member or board chair, we, by the position type, we it allows us to some functionality to search and um, direct information to a specific group of people. So it is important. Yes. Now, notice the, you know, if you've been through any of our trainings before, you notice if you see the little red dot on the side that these fields are required. Um, those that aren't, you know, you don't necessarily need to fill in. Phone number is required. Um, so you would probably want to use the phone number of the library rather than the trustee's home phone number, I would suggest, but um, it is required, so do fill it in. And then um, put in uh, the physical address for the library, but you don't need to fill that in. If you go along and grab the drop down box, oh, it doesn't fill, uh, yes, it does, thank you. It's like, please don't, don't tell me I'm a liar. You know, Assuming that you, we already have your library information in, it will fill it in for you once you go through. And so then, and it's just handy because there's the, um, you know, it gives uh, an address at which the trustee can be reached. And chances are, unless we're closed, like we were for COVID, that they can fairly easily be reached through the library. And if the mailing address is the same as physical address, you can just click on that. In our case, we do have a different mailing address. And in this, here we have, once again, hours work, hourly wage. Trustees don't make an hourly wage, so we don't need to fill that in. But the year appointed is important. So we can keep track of their term. And then we also keep track of, um, you know, whether it's their first term, whether it's their second term, and whether they're appointed or elected. Um, let's say, you know, Zoho person was elected. Yay, it was a hard fought election, but, you know, he, she won. And we are so glad to have this person on our board. So we can go ahead and save that. Now, the other thing that can happen on here, and we'll go ahead and start back at the beginning on this one. Go back to Aspen Admin is um, if somebody just quit and you haven't hired anybody new. And so we're talking about just marking a position vacant. So we'll go back and we'll go to manage positions. And we wait because this is what we like to do. The Aspen pause, three deep breaths. You just start singing a song, take a drink of water. It all works. I hear the Jeopardy, Jeopardy music in my head, but other people have their own favorite songs. <gasps> Okay. And we find one of our people. And I can't mark a director vacant. You could probably do the chief cat herder. Um, I bet you could get that one um, out. Oh, Stanley. Yeah. Okay. He won't mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to edit this one. Actually, no, we're going to replace him. Sorry. And when is um, Stanley leaving as chief cat herder? Uh, well, Stanley left us on Monday. 
It was really sad. Everybody needs a chief cat herder. And this one is, you know, pretty easy on this one because the default that comes up on this one is position vacant. And, you know, why you do this is so that you can just kind of keep that um, position record in there. And so it makes it easy to go ahead and then, you know, replace vacant position with, you know, the new person when they come in, but yet, um, you know, so it's a placeholder, essentially. You're just putting a placeholder in here. And the cat is coming by to help me yet again, because it would be really tragic to have me. And look at all these positions that, you know, vacant position is held. Amazing, amazingly active. But you don't really need to worry about filling in any of the rest of that information because it's just temporary. And I keep having to stop to fling the cat off of the <laughs> off of my desk. There's that save button. That part is really important. Yeah. Do make sure that you scroll all the way down to the bottom to find the save. And once again, you get your little pink box saying that it has been, um, well, in this case, it says your record has been inserted. Um, you can review your record, not a bad idea. Once you've done it, you know, go ahead and take a quick look and make sure that that's what you wanted it to say, because it's easier to edit it from here than to find out later and go back in, but you can always do that as well. So any questions? about um, creating, editing, replacing, removing, marking vacant positions. Does anyone have anything they want to update and be an example and have a, a sterling people be here with you to walk through it? But before we go on to that, I'm going to stop our recording. So if you are watching the recording, be sure to go into Aspen and collect your half credit for watching this tutorial given to us by the expert presents and presentation of Suzanne today. So thank you, Suzanne. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>